Hey guys, what is up? Niad here with Film Comics Explained. Today I have a treat for you all. We are finally going to take a look at the Alien Omnibus Anthology. Beginning with Outbreak. This thing is huge. Collection 1 alone features 5 books. Outbreak, Nightmare Asylum and uh, Female War among others. Outbreak was written by Mark Verhayden and illustrated by Mark A. Nelson and Ron Randall. Now the events in Outbreak are set 10 years after the movie Aliens. Ripley's fate is not revealed to the reader in Outbreak, but we will see her make an appearance down the track. The story focuses on the other two survivors, Hicks and Newt. They have both been struggling with the aftermath of their encounter with the Xenomorphs. Newt is in a mental institution, suffering from horrible, reoccurring uh, nightmares. Her lack of recovery is leading the doctors to resort to turning her into a vegetative state uh, to ease the pain. Hicks is badly scarred and is feared by his fellow marines, who suspect he is contaminated with an alien. Hicks has never gotten over the annihilation of his squad and agrees to a covert mission to travel to the alien homeworld to recover some eggs and destroy the hive. There are multiple storylines, including the emergence of a cult that believes the xenomorphs are a symbol of God's spiritual rebirth. The first three stories form the continuation of the two alien films that have been released um, by the time they were published. Those are the stories we're going to look at. However, in 1992, we saw the release of Alien 3, which contradicted the events of these comics by beginning with the deaths of Newt and Corporal Hicks, which I thought really sucked. Um, so in order to keep the stories relevant to the main Alien film series, Dark Horse Comics changed the names of the characters for future printings of the stories. Newt became Billy, while Hicks was now known as Wilkes. <laughs> I'm going to just refer to them as Hicks and Newt, for convenience sake. The story starts off in a mental asylum. We have Newt who is strapped to a bed and is undergoing testing. Her doctor asks whether she wants to talk about the night before, alluding to an incident that had occurred. She says it won't make a difference before reluctantly going over her dream. She's on the moon of LV-426. Newt and two of her friends have decided to take a crawler and go camping out near one of the remote generators. They have found an information disc that is essentially telling them how to camp, informing them about lighting a fire and so on. They don't have the ability to start one safely and so they've plugged a heater from the crawler to simulate this effect. They then agreed that a common thing to do during a camping adventure was to tell scary stories, and they begin to try and scare each other. Carly goes first and um, told some story about vampires and witches. This was a cliche story, of course, and uh, that normally had no effect. But due to their isolation and the sound of the wind, the story was as scary as any video they could be watching. The heater then goes off, as the girls um, ask Newt to tell them a scary story. Newt says that she doesn't want to, and that she wants to head back. She realises then the fastest way to get them to leave was to tell them the scariest story she knew. Newt then begins to describe the aliens, saying that they have acid for blood and skin as hard as steel. She informs the two that you don't see them until they are already on top of you, and then all you see is their glittering teeth. She surmises that they're either from another world or just exist in the black hell of space. Newt continues by saying, death isn't the end, as they burrow inside of you like a parasite. While Newt is telling her story, we see her friend is feeling unwell, and uh, as they ask her what is wrong, we can see an alien burst out of her chest. Her other friend collapses, also saying she is unwell, as Newt screams out in anguish. She tells the doctor that was probably their moment that they had found her. It's clear Newt is in a bad way. She was very young during the outbreak on Hadley's Hope. She witnessed the death of not only her family, but also the entire population of Hadley's Hope. We see a flashback to Hicks holding Newt while commanding his old group. Now, this serves the purpose of showing Newt asking Hicks not to leave her. What this does is highlight his dedication to her. What we also see is that Hicks is also having nightmares. He enters a room to find Vasquez and Drake with their chests caved in. He leaves and uh, tries to contact the other group members, but before he can reach any of them, he stumbles onto Newt, who is cocooned to the wall, asking him to help her and not leave her behind. Hicks wakes up and is drenched in sweat. We find that he's in prison um, for drunk and disorderly conduct. 
And since the death of his whole squad, he has basically spiraled down a path of alcohol abuse. We have a robotic prison guard telling Hicks to get up. Hicks wants to finish out his sentence, but is told that his high-ranking friends have other plans. He notifies the guard that he has no friends before heading off with an information disc that was uh, handed to him to study. We are now in space as we see the coast guards at work. What we are told is that it was much cheaper to abandon a ship in space than to retrofit and refuel. Because of this, many of the industrial companies simply left their spaceships in decaying orbit, waiting for gravity and the atmosphere to solve their problem. The issue with this is that many of the ships had a nuclear core. One such ship crashed half intact on a coffee plantation on the island of Hawaii. The radiation from this is said to have wiped out all of the indigenous population. Due to risks such as these, the Coast Guard finds ships and blasts them away before they pose a threat to Earth. We see the footage from a Coast Guard operation. What they have found is a ship and its doors appears to have blown out from the inside. They venture in and see the person who opened the airlock wasn't wearing a suit. Now, this indicates they either did it by accident or on purpose as they had no alternative at the time. As they explore the ship, they see signs written in blood saying, kill us all. They speculate that one of the crew suffered a psychotic breakdown and killed the lot. They begin to pick up something on the motion tracker. They agree it's just a cargo carrier that had jolted when they burned the airlock. When they are clear, one of them says that since there is no cargo, they should plant the explosives, leave and detonate from a safe distance. They set up the bomb and depart. Once they reach a safe distance, and agree that they have all the files and uh, the complete history from the other ship, which command will want to go over, they finally detonate the bomb. What we then see is that as they try to manoeuvre through the debris, they encounter technical difficulties with the left retro device. Now they realise the airlock is open and assume the tech guys messed with the system, but one of them sees a dark figure in front of them. As we get a better look, we can see that it is a xenomorph. They are both in shock as the creature is in an airless vacuum and should by all accounts be dead. It moves closer to them and is now on the other side of the panel. They speculate that it might be some kind of parasite. This just goes to show how deadly the aliens are. Not only are they agile and strong, but their survival capabilities push the limit of what is possible. The two get a closer look and realise that it's not a parasite as it begins to hiss. We can also see the shadow of its teeth coming out, which freaks the two out. Seeing the imminent danger, they move to get their spacesuits on, but before they can, one of them is impaled in the chest by the tail of the xenomorph. It's here that we realise all of this is being witnessed off the information disc by Hicks. He says he knew it was only a matter of time before this happened, and states that this is the only reason why the marines never kicked him out. Hicks says as awful as their deaths looked, they were lucky it was quick. We see that the ship eventually exploded under the pressure of the hull breach caused by the Xenomorph's forced entrance. We then start to get more information about the type of world that exists here. We are told that commercial television had disappeared, making way for superconductive transmission technology, with systems offering thousands of channels. Think of it as a super advanced Netflix. <laughs> Since major broadcasting left television, all that were left were religious programming on TV. And we also see a cameraman setting up next to a man who believes he has a message for the world. What he tells us is that there are many people who have been getting visions and messages over the past few months. We will later find out that this is the Queen Mother, an alien that is said to be the leader of the species. Now this preacher has what appears to be a xenomorph. At this stage it's not clear whether it is a statue or a dead xenomorph. As he is speaking his sermon, the cameraman makes fun of the idea that that creature could be a god. This may seem harmless, but what we will find out is we'll see the power that religion will have over people, causing them to do outrageous things. We return to the institution and we have Newt's friend call out to sit next to her in the cafeteria. Newt appears to be disorientated as we see her knocking her food over as she goes to sit down. We find out that the treatments the doctors are using are having a negative effect on her well-being. It basically looks like they're attempting to visually brainwash her. Newt begins to break down, saying the doctors don't understand her. She hasn't really done anything wrong other than behaving differently. This is sad and true, she's just as victim of circumstance. 
Newt works herself up to a state where she knocks her food tray into her friend. The guards then rush in and drag her away as she screams, they are still out there. Hicks has been called into the base for a special meeting with higher command. What Hicks tells us is that one of the men that will be at the meeting, Colonel Stevens, was a man who thought he was a warrior, even though he had uh, not been in any hostile situations. Hicks enters the briefing room and is asked if he had seen the disc. He says that he has. He then confirms that uh, he has special experience in these matters. Hicks goes through the events of the movie Aliens. He explains that he was part of a detachment that was sent to investigate the loss of contact with the terraforming settlement. A command had suspected an alien presence was involved. When they arrived, they found the whole place was ransacked and were only able to find one survivor, Newt. Before they could leave, they were engaged in close quarters combat with the aliens. And he says that other than Ripley, Newt and himself, nobody made it out alive. The Doctor then questions whether Hicks can call what he has alive, commenting on the downward spiral he has been on since the encounter. The Doctor asks the Colonel to step out while he has a private word with Hicks. Now, Hicks appears to be a bit agitated here. He tells the Doctor that he is happy to talk about the aliens, but doesn't see how his personal records are pertinent. The Doctor then reveals his name is Orana, and tells Hicks his personal details are entirely pertinent. Orana goes through the severe burns caused to his face due to acid blood, and informs us that during the events that Hicks was in quarantine, Hicks didn't receive a single visitor. What's worse is after he was cleared, he had problems readjusting as his former friends now feared that he might be infectious and avoided his contact. This caused him to become drunken and disorderly on a regular basis. It's here that we discover Orana is a geneticist who is after specimens. He informs the corporal that before the explosion, the course trajectory of the previous ship had been transmitted, and they have located the source of what appears to be the alien homeworld. He offers Hicks redemption in return for specimens. We know that Orana is basically appealing to Hicks' desire for vengeance, not redemption. We get back to the asylum where Newt is having more nightmares about a strange alien. This is the Queen Mother. She essentially has been telepathically sending messages to her species and ours. What we find out is that the doctors are mistaking these messages as a sign that Newt's condition is deteriorating and uh, decide to up her dosage to dangerous levels. Newt is woken up by her friend Sasha, who informs her that she has a visitor. As she arrives to the visitor station, uh, before she can see who is there, a woman appears on the screen beside her, informing her that they have 10 minutes and that they are being monitored. Uh, she also tells her that talk of any treatment will result in a suspension of her visitation privileges. Corporal Hicks then appears through the glass and tells her that he had to see her. What he reveals is that he's been dreaming about the aliens. He informs her that they have found the alien homeworld and he's essentially going back out there. Newt begs him to take her with him. She lets him know that they are killing her with drugs and are taking her mind. When Hicks tries to get her to expand, two guards come in and drag her away by force. We see Newt begging him to help her, saying she doesn't want to die before she is removed from the room. The same woman then pops up on his monitor and tells him to leave as the visitation period has finished. We are gonna wrap things up here and pick up in a few days with volume 2 of the graphic novel Aliens Outbreak. We have Hicks getting ready to leave for a mission to the alien homeworld. We are gonna see him struggle with the prospect of leaving Newt to her fate. All of his squad died to ensure she lived, and she's essentially the only thing left from that history. We will also find out that there is a second mission that is being planned with the aims of sabotaging the ship that Hicks and Newt will be on. All the while, a dangerous cult is gearing itself towards bringing about an alien apocalypse on Earth. This is just good shit. <laughs> That's all that we have time for. I hope you've had as much fun as me. Uh, if you have, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to stay up to date on all my content. I'm Nia with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.